Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Amy, if you don't already know, and today I'm going to give you a little tour of every philodendron species in my houseplant collection. So I've thought about doing this video for quite a while now, but you know what? Philodendron are one of the most popular genera of houseplants, I would argue, and I have quite a few of them. They are one of my favorites to grow, they have such a huge variety of species. There's so many different types out there and they're really quite easy to grow in a houseplant environment. A lot of them like high humidity, warmth, and aren't that picky when it comes to care. Obviously, there's always exceptions to that with rare or more difficult species, but in general, a lot of them are quite easy. I just wanna quickly tell you guys that I have launched a Patreon. So if you guys watched my thank you for 5,000 video, I did discuss on there that I was kind of exploring different options on whether to set up a Patreon and stuff and what would be included in it and things like that. So I have finally set one up and it is live now. So if you are interested in supporting me on Patreon and getting access to bonus content, which also includes a Discord server, um, shout outs and videos, bonus videos, live streams, all of that good stuff, you can check out my Patreon and the link is in my bio. Since we have so many to get to, I'm just going to get straight to the point. So I'm essentially just going to go through the room and whatever I see. So the first uh, philodendron I see, which I definitely have multiples of, is actually mounted on the wall behind my desk where my camera is. This is the beautiful philodendron varicosum. So I have a, my big one growing up here, which I will include B-roll footage of, but here is a little propagation that I potted up um, in this small little pot and I just, there's something about a varicosum in a small pot that I just think is so cute. So one of my absolute all time faves, I don't think that will ever change. This is such a beautiful plant. Look at the colors on that. Um, look at the backs of the leaves. It is just so beautiful. One of the main reasons why I love this is very easy to grow. It's quite vocal in terms of when it needs water, it gets really um, kind of floppy like this, um, which I try to get it before it gets to that stage, but it's pretty easy. We have the red on the back of the leaves. We have a fuzzy petiole here. We have this beautiful kind of almost lightning stripe Color, this is a new leaf and so it hasn't hardened off. They're usually a bit more green and then they get a bit darker once the leaf is at its full kind of stage. So that is it. I have a couple of these. So I have my big one over there, which has a couple of cuttings. Beautiful, beautiful species. And um, I, I think I have shown this in a recent favorites video because it's a current favorite because it's looking great. but. This plant I've cut back to the soil maybe two or three times over the last couple of years and it always grows back really well and it gets quite tall and it's just a beautiful, beautiful species to have. It has um, the velvety leaves, it has the fuzzy petiole, it has the red abaxial side of the leaves, it has the venation, it just has all the beautiful things that really attract you to tropical houseplants and it will continue to be one of my very favorite plants. The next plant is just a little bit bigger and it's over in the corner here behind the camera. This plant is getting quite wobbly, which happens with philodendrons. This is my philodendron gigas. Let me just try and show you in good light. It's a little bit scraggly and this guy needs to be hooked up to something and there's an almost snapped piece here. It's not in the best shape. Honestly, I find this plant just a little bit tricky to keep happy consistently. I find that it gets happy and then sometimes it gets sad, which is totally fine, but um, it can be a little bit tricky in terms of that. Um, so I may have to cut this back and propagate it, I'm not sure. I have propagated it in water before and it grows pretty easily. So like most philodendrons do in my opinion. So this one is beautiful. It has 
these long, again, velvety, but really dark leaves and such a beautiful kind of oval leaf shape. Um, when the leaves are quite young, they can have a red tinge to the back of the leaf. leaf. Let me try and show. It's quite wobbly. It does have a kind of a reddy orange tinge to the back of the leaf, but that seems to go as the leaf hardens. So these are the newest leaves here. This is quite hard to hold. <laughs> Let me cover my face. So this, uh, these are the newest leaves. This does not feel good to me. I think this snap, this snap down here has uh, cut off the supply from this to the roots. Um, so I will need to propagate and clean this plant up a little bit, I think. In tropical rainforests, they like to use their aerial roots to attach onto bigger plants like trees and stuff, and they grow in an upward direction to get um, more access to light that wouldn't be present on kind of the uh, forest floor so that they can get support and grow bigger leaves and get more uh, sunlight. So that's why a lot of these like to grow up things, um, which I'm sure a lot of you already know. But yeah, it's a gorgeous plant, but it's definitely not up there with super, super easy compared to my other philodendrons. It may be that it wants higher humidity. I'm not quite sure, but because of the darker leaves and the higher chlorophyll that it has, it, it doesn't need as much light, I feel, than others, but a really kind of gothic, sexy. Look at that sheen on the leaf. They're really soft. And um, they're a bit more kind of hardy, these leaves, when compared to like a varicosum. They're a bit thicker. Um, but yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous plant just really needs some TLC. I need to put some time into this, get it a much better climbing structure, cut it back probably and propagate it. And it will be a bit happier, I hope. Oh, here's an example of a... Uh, Another one that honestly doesn't do that well for me. We're starting off with a couple of bad ones, but you know, this one is actually attached to the shelf as a climbing situation. So this is a philodendron melanochrysum, which should look a little bit more mature and longer leaves um, like the gigas, but honestly, this plant I find is a bit more on the tricky side of philodendron. That's the way it looks. It looks a bit off there at the top. Um, so I have kind of two cuttings here that I got off someone on Facebook and it's absolutely gorgeous. It really is a beautiful, beautiful philodendron. Look at those leaves. Again, heart-shaped, amazing venation and um, kind of velvety leaves. The backs of the leaves are a little bit kind of coppery. I don't know if that's gonna show up on camera, but they are a little bit coppery, which is more pronounced on the back of newer leaves. Yeah, it's a little bit more coppery on the newer leaves. The new leaves come out in a really kind of a, the new leaves come out a bit orangey. The issues that I've been having with this plant are, it's obviously quite leggy. It doesn't seem to attach very readily to things. Um, I've tried it on a branch. I've tried multiple different things. I have cut it a couple of times. I cut it here um, a while ago and propagated it to see if that would encourage it to grow kind of more bushy. Um, but the, the main issue that I have with it, and I know it doesn't have pests because I have monitored and I have uh, treated it on, you know, I've, I've gilt, given it some good treatment and I've never seen any pests on it. However, the new leaves, which I do believe is a humidity issue, tend to come out a little bit squished in uh, the petiolar sheath. Um, and, you know, they can come out a bit deformed. It just, I genuinely think the humidity in here is just not high enough for this plant, unfortunately. And if you know me at all, <laughs> you know that I'm not up for like super picky plants and I'm not, I, I used to have a humidifier that I used to run and honestly, 
the effort it takes to refill and clean that thing and also the added energy consumption that that takes um, as far as a house plant setup goes is just not for me and if the plant is just not growing happily in this environment then it's just not growing happily and that's okay so I've accepted that but I do find that this is one of those philodendrons that is just a little bit more tricky it's not you know super struggling or dying or anything but it's just not in its best form I feel so this is how that looks again like the gigas I think I'm going to cut this back and see if I can save it again Okay. Okay, so the next plant I actually got close to the time that I started my YouTube channel in 2020. And so I've had it for that long. And me and this plant have been through a whole journey of learning how to care for plants, lots of lots of chopping and propping. Um, and I used to always feel like, why can't I get this plant right? Why can't I get this to look like how it looks on other people's in other people's collections and I think it looks pretty great now but it's definitely not like super mature so this is the beautiful philodendron squamiferum which I really 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 love and like I said we've been through a lot together okay so as you can probably tell this is like so many different propagations all put into the one pot to allow this plant to look really bushy as it does. Um, because I was finding that it was just looking so kind of scraggly and the leaves weren't getting mature or anything. And I feel like it's only really this year that it started to really become very happy. And I'm not quite sure what that is in terms of care. I probably water it a little bit more than I used to. I think I was allowing it to dry out a little bit too much and that was stressing it a little bit. But let me talk about this beauty. So it is not velvety leaved, it's quite heavy. Um, the leaves are quite thick, they're very green. They have a beautiful leaf shape. They don't have much venation or any of that, but it's, it's the leaf shape for me that is just so beautiful. But the real star of the show in terms of structure is these red fluffy petioles which are just the coolest thing ever if you have ever seen a philodendron serpens which also has like extreme hairy petioles much more than this one this is like a great really cheap and common dupe for that plant i find and it's just it's really found everywhere it's super affordable and it's just such a beautiful beautiful plant I have thought about getting rid of it so many times when it didn't look as good as it does now. Um, but it's just such a cool plant. The um, new leaves come in, as you can see in the, the um, sheath here, that they come in quite red as well, which is just beautiful. It definitely doesn't attach as readily to like a wooden pole or anything like that than other philodendrons. It takes a little bit longer and you know, but that's okay. This is what its juvenile leaves look like without kind of the shapes fully in, the shape of the leaf fully formed. But yeah, this is how it looks in general. It stays on the floor there and it's quite happy. So this is my philodendron black cardinal is what's on the tag. I'm not fully sure if that's definitely what it is but I think it probably is. So this has quite a different growth habit. It's more of a kind of a shrub, bushy type growth. So yes, the growth habit is quite different and the leaves are really, really shiny and beautiful. This is the newest leaf. Um, not like particularly amazing, I would say, in terms of leaf shape and structure, but it is still quite beautiful in a subtle way. I love how dark the leaves are and also this kind of purpley color that comes on um, the sheath, the petolier sheaths and it's just gorgeous and of course the the way the new leaves come in if I can show you 
are really, really pretty. My hands are covered in soil, of course. They're really, really dark. And it's quite, yeah, again, a gothic kind of looking philodendron. And it's really beautiful. It, it's a, quite a slow grower, in my opinion. And it's been in this pot for forever, I think, as long as I've had it. I think I had spider mites and or thrips on this at some point, And it was looking shitty for quite a few years. <laughs> and like I said, I, I considered getting rid of it quite a couple of times. Um, but I just stuck with it. And I think it's turned out to be really, really beautiful. And I love it. Um, and it's quite compact. So yes, that's my philodendron, I think, black cardinal. And um, what was I saying? Yes, yeah, so a lot of the other philodendrons, because they grow quite upright and they can grow quite fast, they can really fill up a space. And if you, if you don't have that space, that can get to a point that's kind of irritating and you constantly have to cut them back. But a philodendron like this with a kind of a more compact growth habit could be a really good option if you are stuck for space. So that is her. You know, I'm seeing a bit of a trend with my um, philodendron that <laughs> because I've had quite a lot of these for some time, I have considered getting rid of them on multiple occasions as well. And this is definitely one of those. So I got this plant also again a, a long time ago, maybe three years ago now. And I didn't love it when I got it. I'm not quite sure why I got it. I got it as a small, you know, a small three or four euro plant um, in a garden center. Didn't think it through as you did back then. Um, but it's become a plant that I really, really love. And that is my philodendron Hederaceum uh, Brazil. So there's quite a few um, cultivars and types of Hederaceum out there. Um, Hederaceum kind of meaning, I think, heart-shaped. Heart so you're heart-shaped common uh, philodendron types and there's so many of them <laughs> but this is one that I just wasn't I just wasn't so excited about the way it looked there was something to do with the yellow variegation and the striping that I wasn't a huge fan of so it's quite a big plant but I tell you this used to be way bigger than this and um, I had it growing on the side of my shelf here and then it actually fell and snapped off one day which was really upsetting and I had like huge leaves on this like bigger than my hand and unfortunately that didn't work out <laughs> but it's recovered well and I've repotted it um quite recently as well into this nice white pot so so this plant has a lot of colors going on we have quite we have a bit of pink we have some kind of orange um stems we have the green, we have light green, we have a yellowy green, and um, we have different ver levels of variegation, we have white leaves, we have all sorts. Like, so it's a little bit kind of a crazy color, but honestly, it's quite fun, and I really like that. Uh, the new leaves can come in a quite a coppery color as well. And it's just, it's quite gorgeous. And the way it trails, this is actually all tied up. Let me try and untie it to show you. I just kind of bunched it all together. But it was, so it's it's quite long. But I just, um, I just, you know, wrap it all around and make it do whatever. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, it's really beautiful. It, it does readily give out uh, aerial roots and I did have it attached onto a branch as well. And especially as it gets more mature, the stems kind of thicken, like most philodendrons. They kind of thicken up to give a lot of support to be able to grow bigger leaves. And that, that, is, that is her. So yes, I've had this plant for quite a long time. It's been through a lot of changes, a lot of different growing spaces, but it's really happy where it is now. And it gets quite a high level of light. Because of the higher variegation, it can take a little bit more light. Um, than a philodendron of the same size with, you know, just green leaves. And I do actually have the green leaf version of this, which I may as well show you now. So yes, I have the philodendron heteraceum, just the, the plain green version of that. 
and um, I'm going to include the b-roll of this because it's just it's nicer to see it up on the wall so this is up on a terracotta hook on the side of my wall and I really really like how it looks it's a beautiful trailing plant it can climb as well and I'm considering putting up some kind of hooks onto the wall to encourage it to grow partly up the wall as well which I think could look really cool and um, yeah it's just beautiful I, again I've had this plant for a very long time it is probably the easiest I have to grow in terms of care like they, it, the philodendron heteracium are really not fussy with care at all I do have a philodendron heteracium micans as well which I'll also include b-roll of it's downstairs in my living room but I honestly wouldn't love to promote my personal care of this plant which has been terrible this plant really needs a new pot it is severely chronically overwatered. I don't know why that is I feel like I just forget that it's there um so it doesn't grow very well it also gets very low light levels and the leaves quite stay quite small because of that so it's not a very good example but it is in my collection <laughs> sometimes you know sometimes they're just plants that you just don't give all the right conditions to and that is one of them I think it is because of where it is I just seem to forget about it there are some other plants nearby that I'm consistently taking care of and I feel like I just focus the focus my attention on them instead but it is a beautiful version of that the micans it is velvety so it's kind of like a a nice kind of hybrid cultivar of that and um, I think actually Am I wrong in saying that I read somewhere that that is actually just the mature version of it? I'm not quite sure. If I have any information from my research on that, I'll put it on the screen. Yeah, so that's another beautiful version of that. So let's move on next. So we have my philodendron tortum, of which I have two of these um, due to cuttings. <laughs> so I will show you both. The original mama plant is here so this plant if some of you have followed me for a while you would have known was quite big and was growing past the point of this long branch but i cut it back when we moved and this is how big it is now so this is a very different looking species i mean it really quite looks like a fern it is one of my favorites in terms of the way that it looks i just think it's so cool it's very light and beautiful also when the leaves emerge they kind of unfold in a beautiful way i will include i actually do have a time lapse of that that i have been meaning to post for a long time so i should post it but yeah it's a beautiful plant it definitely grows a little bit on the slower side compared to my other philodendrons and i do find that once you do give it a branch or a pole or something to grow up it can get a bit leggy which is fine but i wanted it to be more bushy so i took a lot of cuttings from this and i filmed that actually as well <laughs> so this is this <laughs> Um, just try and show you the plant more really really beautiful there isn't much in terms of color going on it's all just quite green the uh, new leaves and the sheath can come out a little bit coppery orangey color um, which fades but yeah the back of the leaves again are just they're just green but it's gorgeous so I have this and then right beside it I have the cuttings that I took from that of which I planted all together and I and I really really love the way that this looks and I do think um, I'm going to actually repot these repot both of them together because it will look much bushier and nice so you can see how much bushier this is this is quite a few cuttings one two three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cuttings all together. So to get that bushy look, you really need kind of that many, but it looks so cool. I love, la 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 love the way that looks. So I have both of those down there. And like I said, I think I'm going to combine them. You can kind of see, can you? There's that new leaf coming in here and see the way they come in kind of all curled up and then they unfold. Um, so it's kind of like a fern, really, really gorgeous, cool, cool, cool plant. And uh, like I said, that's a philodendron tortum. So the next one over here, um, I again have two 
two parts of right beside each other which really should be combined and this one has a bit of a story to it I feel like this plant nobody's really sure what this plant is to be very honest um, I originally bought this plant let me show you the big one uh, kind of a weird growth, growth habit kind of a bit all over the place but I and then this is the second one I have beside it so this is I bought this as a philodendron nangaratense, okay? And there was a bit of a craze going on with the nangaratense, which has a beautiful petiole that kind of has dots on it that create kind of a ribbed um, texture. And a lot of these plants are being sold as nangaratense, but then it kind of came out later that they were not nangaratense, which has a bit of a different growth habit. And like I said, has these dots on the petiole. And I was kind of looking at this plant, I think somebody actually said it to me, and this is not it. So this was then kind of renamed as a philodendron species fuzzy petiole, like it's a cultivar. I haven't looked much more into that since that, which was a good two years ago now. So I don't know if this has been identified fully as a cultivar, or if that actually is the name of it. I'm, I'm not too sure about that. I believe that the Nangar tense is much more of a crawler like the Philodendron gloriosum up there which I'm going to get through but this plant does kind of have a bit of an upright growth habit. Sure this is not doing what it should but it's just growing on the floor. So yeah so that's what it looks like just to show you the petiole. So you can see that these are much more like little tiny hairs rather than just dots, which I think was kind of the main characteristic feature of differentiating that from an angar tense. So I never got an angar tense in the end, even though I paid for one. But um, yeah, so we have kind of red uh, sheets and all of that. We have when the leaves are new, they come out with a little bit coppery back there can get quite big leaves but when you propagate it I do find the leaves get smaller which is common as well. Um, in terms of my success in growing this plant I wouldn't say it's been very successful. Here's the other cutting. Again uh, I do think this requires higher humidity for me because as you can see it does not have pests but some of the leaves struggle to get out of the sheath. They get stuck, they get ripped. That happens with some uh, philodendrons and I just kind of let it do its thing it doesn't look the hottest for sure I probably will sell this I would I would say I also ran over this leaf with the hoover which is very sad that's what you get for growing plants on the floor um, and yeah I don't know it just wasn't it's still pretty it's still pretty it just wasn't what I thought it was I guess and like I said I think it needs more humidity from me and I'm not giving it to it so that's fair that it's not growing um, to its best ability I knew this was going to be a long video so the last two philodendrons in that corner one of which you if you followed if you've been subscribed for a while you should probably know about this plant this is my philodendron species affinity sagittifolium um, which I think that's what it is, so species affinity. And this plant, I have a plant story video on this and I have, I think, a two-year update on that as well, maybe even a three-year update, um, which I will include here if you're interested in watching. But this is definitely kind of my biggest, chunkiest philodendron and it is one that I got a cutting of in Italy when I got married and it's growing really, really well and it's like my tree philodendron. It's really, really big, continues to just grow fantastically for me and it's really easy to take care of. The leaves are really, really thick and hardy. It is just plain green, but it has such a beautiful leaf shape and it, like I said, it grows so easily for me. I won't go into that much more since I've made other videos about it. You can go and watch those. And beside that, I have my philodendron pedatum. Um, so this was quite a common philodendron maybe two years ago. I'm not sure if it still is. Uh, another one that is pretty much like a tree. I guess I can pick it up. So yeah. <laughs> Whoa. So that's that. Um, backs of the leaves. It has fully attached onto this big huge pole. Um, pinky red petioles with little dots on them or yeah little dots on them. It has kind of a, 
a, ri a red ribbing on the back of the leaves, the front of the leaves, just the most amazing leaf shape. And yeah, it's quite big and beautiful and I absolutely love this plant so much. I've had it for, for years, <laughs> but it's, it's just gorgeous. And again, really easy to care for. Oh, there's a little spider. Hello, welcome. The last section in this room is here. So we have this. This is my Philodendron Atabapoense Bietie hybrid. So it's a hybrid between those two species. And it's really gorgeous. I mean, this is such a cool looking leaf shape. I mean, it reminds you of the Holy Grail Spiritus Sancti. That is probably the most expensive plant in the damn world right now. And, um, and a rarest as well, but this is not that. <laughs> so the Atifa Poense has quite the red abaxial side of the leaves, the kind of the wine color. And then the Bietier has kind of an orange petiole as well. So this is a lovely mix between the two, which are a bit more expensive on their own as species. So it is a hybrid. But um, it's a it's a cheaper it's a cheaper hybrid, and I just love the growth habit of this. It's really really beautiful. It definitely needs something to climb. All of this is just self supported, and um, it's sending out aerial roots, so it really needs something to grab onto, which I will give it soon. But it also needs a repot. Um, so that is <laughs> that is her. Really really beautiful. It sits up high on the top here, and is quite happy with that setup, I believe. So yes, so um, the last philodendron in this room, last but definitely not least, I don't think I'm going to take it down because it is such a pain to get down. It is way too big. It is my philodendron gloriosum up there, which is so big now, guys, it's so big. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight leaves. It takes up even longer than the length of that shelf, which is a good over a meter long. Um, it's very heavy. Come on, focus. So it is really, really big. Um, it is unmanageable. I spoke about this plant in a video, maybe over Christmas, showing you my biggest plants and I was saying that it was getting too big and that I need to, I need to air layer it so that I can cut it. And it is just one of those tasks that have been on my plant to-do list for so long that I just haven't done, which is terrible because it should be <laughs> creating roots right now from those nodes to allow me to cut it, maybe sell pieces and just get it to a more manageable size because it has been just growing crazy. Um, it's really beautiful. I love it. It's one of my faves. It's such a gorgeous it, the venation on the leaves the heart-shaped leaves the velvet the all the things that we love that is common throughout this video um is just really really gorgeous but i really do need to get it under control because it is just such a huge huge plant and because it's a crawler and it grows kind of horizontally laterally it can take up space really really fast so again, not a philodendron that you want to just pick up on a whim like I did <laughs> and then decide later where you're going to put it because um, although I have found space for it, it is just, it's just a constant battle for space. And like I said, you're just going to have to keep cutting it. Um, so that is her. She's just so beautiful. I love the way it's on the top. It's quite heavy, but it, it really like is such a statement piece up there and and that that's what this plant is she is the queen so yes so that's her so now we're done with kind of all the philodendron in this room but i need to think do i have any anywhere else do 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 i only have one more philodendron actually outside of this room that i'm going to go and get now because it is definitely worth showing and it isn't it hasn't been my favorite to grow, so I think it is important to speak about it and show it in its current state. So I'm gonna go down and get that plant for you right now. Okay, so I've gotten the plant. And this is the Philodendron Plowmanii. Whoa, it's big. <laughs> you can see why it's no longer in this room anymore. It's a big, 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 another big Philodendron. Oh, it's so pretty, right? But honestly, this plant is ban-jaxed, if any of you know what that means. 
Um, it is it is a beautiful plant, but honestly, it's not my favorite to grow, and I'll and I'll tell you why. First of all, it's a crawler like a uh, philodendron gloriosum, so again, takes up a lot of space quickly. Although the internodal spacing is not as big on a gloriosum, so you have a bit more time to play with. Um, I've spoken about this when I got it, I think. But the um, petioles on this are super interesting. It has kind of ruffles. It has those beautiful lining. Um, it's kind of convex. Is that the right? Yeah, convex. Um, really, really pretty. However, I'll tell you why I don't like growing it. First of all, some of the leaves are quite bashed up because, oh, oh no, it's okay. I was like, there's spider webs. Is that spider mites? A very fine spider web, but it is not because I can see the actual spider and he's welcome there. Guys, I'm gonna have to put this down. It's too big. The reason I don't like growing it, it dry, when it dries out, it's very dramatic, I find. It, uh, the leaves can get crispy quite quickly and it doesn't allow you a lot of time to kind of rectify that. I find that may be a me issue. Um, definitely had issues with uh, chlorosis on the leaves. My Plant Basics episode one series uh, talks about chlorosis, what that is and what could be the issue with that. I thought it might be a nutrient deficiency, but it was a new plant and generally those are fed with, you know, they're fed well uh, in garden centers and distributors so that the plant looks as healthy as possible when you get it. So I was kind of like, uh, don't think that's the issue. It wasn't a pest issue either because I had treated it and I never saw any signs of anything. Probably the biggest thing with this plant is I have a lot of kind of, I think possibly extra floral nectaries or just kind of salt deposits on the backs of the leaves. Now, I haven't done full research into why that is. Um, there were tiny little kind of dots on the back of the leaves that don't look too hot. It is not a pest, you guys. I know it is not a pest because I have checked and I have treated this plant for months on end and it's nothing to do with that. But it's, it's, it's probably extra floral nectaries, which is fine. And my next Plant Basics episode is actually going to be all about extra floral nectaries. I've learned all about them. I've comprised a whole little video for you guys that will be coming, I think, next week. You know, which is a natural process and that's fine, but it doesn't look too hot and it kind of, it's kind of just icky and it leaves a lot of mess behind, um, I'm finding. And it's just not, it's just honestly not my favorite to grow and that's fine. Um, it is a beautiful plant though, I will say. Like it has pillowy leaves. It has this amazing kind of variegation. So let me show you the backs of the leaves that I've been talking about. So let's take a deep look. Can you even see that? I feel like the light is washing it out. I literally can't even show it on camera, what the heck? Oh, maybe you can see it a bit there. You see all these kind of black dots? They are all from deposits on the back of the leaves and it's really sticky. Yeah, here it is again. You can see the kind of glossy stickiness there. So sometimes when you see little dots on the back of the leaves, this can tell you that there's a lots of tiny insects biting holes into the back of the leaves. Sometimes spider mites can look like this, but this is totally different. Um, it, 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 I'm pretty sure it is extra, extra floral nectaries because it's very sweet and when it dries it has a very kind of sticky sugary substance so it's that I explain in the new episode of Plant Basics that what this is why plants do it and all of that and so it is a totally natural process and it's to do with attracting different types of insects to the plant but in a home setting where we don't have insects it's not it's not the hottest thing and I don't know if any of you have that experience with your plyomani eyes, if you have them, please let me know. I'd be very interested to know if other people are experiencing this with their plants or if it's just my particular plant for some reason has decided to do this on a kind of a higher level. So I, I find the plant just doesn't look its best. It's also very large, like I said, it grows fast, the leaves are very big. Um, it's hard to keep it stable in a plant like in a pot like that. It should really be in a in a long pot like my 
Gloriosum because it's a crawler. Is that all my philodendrons? Oh, I think so. That was quite a long, that was quite a long video, you guys. But I, I, you know, I do have quite a few philodendron. Quite a hefty video to do, but I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, my last tour of my Hoya collection did pretty well, and some of you asked for a philodendron tour as well. Um, so here that is. I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know what uh, genera you would like the next kind of mini tour to be on. That is it guys. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. Um, please let me know if you've faced any of similar issues with philodendron that I have. Let me know if you have some of these. Which ones do you have that I should maybe look into getting? And that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you again in the next video next week. Bye.